you're scared. I can feel it. Animal blood. It keeps me I've going. Heard stories about Have you ever you. wondered what human blood tastes like? What? about the man on the hill had been circulating in the village for as long as anyone could remember. They whispered about his eerie solitude, about how he'd managed to live off the land without ever setting foot in the village for supplies. I, being an investigative reporter with a penchant for oddities, found the stories too tantalizing to resist. After some discreet inquiries, I found his cabin, a dilapidated, cobweb-laden building that seemed as ancient as the tales surrounding it. One evening, armed with a recording device, I rapped lightly on his door, my heart pounding a tad bit louder than I'd have liked. The door creaked open, revealing a thin, pale man. His face was lined with age, yet his eyes shone with an ethereal blue brightness. They looked hungry. Starved, even. But of what? Can I help you, Moira? He whispered, his voice so soft it barely disturbed the evening air. I've heard stories about you, I began hesitantly. I wanted to know more. May I ask you a few questions? Surprisingly, he agreed and invited me in. Inside, the cabin felt colder than the chilly evening. We sat down, and I turned on my tape recorder placing it between us. He spoke of his past, how he came to live alone, and how he had managed to sustain himself for so long. As the hours went by, his stories became increasingly eccentric. He spoke of ancient rituals and hinted at strange appetites. I don't eat meat, he mused, an odd smile gracing his face. At least not in the way you might think. My stomach churned when he gave me permission to open his refrigerator, inside of which I found jars filled with a thick, red substance. It's just animal blood, he confessed with a shrug. It keeps me going. Tastes better than you might think. I tried to keep my composure, but the situation was quickly devolving. When he saw the unease on my face, he sighed. You're scared. I can feel it he whispered, the hunger in his eyes intensifying. Have you ever wondered what human blood tastes like? I recoiled. What? Oh, come now, come, he said, leaning closer, his icy fingers tracing a vein on my arm. Just a taste. You could give me a sample. I've always been curious. As his grip tightened, my mind raced. All right, I croaked, trying to buy time. But just a small sample. He retrieved a sharp silver knife and held it up, its blade reflecting the dim light of the room. But as he brought it close to my arm, the intensity in his eyes shifted to something uncontrollable. He began to shake, clearly overwhelmed by the prospect of new blood. I felt it, the precise moment my interview went from dangerous to deadly. It's not enough, he murmured, more to himself than to me. I need more. So much more. In a desperate move, I slammed the recorder into his face, causing him to stumble backward. Using those precious moments, I lunged towards the door and bolted out, the cold night air stinging my face. Behind me, I could hear his tormented cries, a mix of fury and longing. But I didn't stop. I kept running until I reached the safety of the village where I shared my harrowing experience with the locals. For days, they tried to locate the man, but his cabin was found empty, save for the recorder I'd left behind. The last recording played the man's raspy voice. The thirst is real, and it's never quenched. One day, maybe, I'll taste it again. 